In this video lesson, we're going to show you how to connect your LN2 lines from the doer to your thermal chamber. Your doer's LN2 pressure should already be set to match your thermal chamber's pressure requirements. We discussed setting your doer pressure earlier in this video training course. To tighten the LN2 connections, you will need two adjustable wrenches, an LN2 rated coolant line, and your personal protective equipment. We will be working with liquid nitrogen lines at this point. Make sure that you wear all of your PPE. We will start by hand tightening your coolant lines at the doer and chamber. First, hand tighten the connections at the blue liquid valve on your doer. Please note that it is best practice that all PRVs point downwards. Next, hand tighten the connections at the cryo inlet of your thermal chamber. Hand tightening the connections at the doer and thermal chamber will minimize the chance of cross-threading these connections. Now use the adjustable wrench to tighten the connection at the blue liquid valve on your doer. Before we open the blue liquid valve and allow LN2 to flow to our thermal chamber, we need to make sure that our wrenches are sized properly to adjust the connections at the chamber's cryo inlet. We are not going to tighten the cryo inlet connections just yet. Hand tight is what we need right now. But we will need to adjust the cryo inlet connections once the doer's blue liquid valve is opened. Now that your wrenches are adjusted to fit the cryo inlet connections, open the blue valve on the doer. Liquid nitrogen will begin flowing from the doer to your thermal chamber. Our attention should now be on the cryo inlet connections. We want to see the gaseous nitrogen vapor escaping from the hand tightened connections. Once you are sure that gaseous nitrogen vapor is present, wait for the cryo inlet fittings to frost up. Once the fittings have frosted up, use your wrenches to fully tighten the connections. If you do not see the vapor, use your wrenches to slowly loosen the hand tightened connections. Carefully use quarter turn increments. You do not want to fully disconnect the LN2 line from the cryo inlet. Once you are sure that gaseous nitrogen vapor is present, wait for the cryo inlet fittings to frost up. Once the fittings have frosted up, use your wrenches to fully tighten the connections. This process ensures that the delivery line is free of air. This is important because air in the line carries moisture and moisture could freeze and create a blockage and flow of coolant, thereby reducing your thermal chamber's performance. At this point, we have successfully connected our LN2 delivery line to the thermal chamber. When you're ready to disconnect your LN2 lines, you'll need to start by fully closing the blue liquid valve at the doer. This will shut off the flow of LN2 to your chamber. Once the blue valve is closed, you need to bleed the delivery line dry of LN2. Bleed the line by using your adjustable wrenches to loosen the delivery line at the cryo inlet. Do not fully disconnect the line yet. You want the nitrogen in the line to escape as nitrogen gas. You may see nitrogen vapor when this happens, just like you did when connecting the line. If you don't see vapor, that could be okay.
Just look carefully at the back of the flare fitting of the delivery line. If this fitting is loosened enough, you will see a gap and have some play between the flare fitting and where the delivery line passes through the fitting. This gap is where the vapor would escape from, and if you see the gap but no vapor, then the line may not have had much LN2 in it to begin with. Once the line is properly bled, it is safe to disconnect. When you disconnect the line, you should point it downwards and away from you or anyone else just to make sure that there is no liquid left in the line. This concludes safely disconnecting the LN2 line.